Welcome to the BioBalance HealthCast, episode number 332. The National Institute of Health study validates testosterone for men. BioBalance HealthCast features conversations about positive aging. Your hosts are Dr. Kathy Maupin, Medical Director of BioBalance Health and a leading expert in treating symptoms of aging, and Brett Newcomb, a licensed professional counselor. Dr. Maupin and Brett are the authors of The Secret Female Hormone, the seminal work about hormone replacement therapy for women, which is available on Amazon or from Dr. Maupin's office at BioBalance Health. Dr. Maupin's office is currently accepting new patients. Dr. Maupin and I have been excited about the work that we do. We've written a book called The Secret Female Hormone to talk about hormone changes and treatments in women. And we've done 300 and something health casts to talk about it. Uh, and one of the challenges that we have had because of our excitement, things that we feel, that, that data that's been accumulated in her office for the last 15 years mm-hmm. with, with literally thousands of patients and with conventions that we've gone to where other doctors who do these kinds of treatments gather and share the news, the good news of <laughs> the fact that hormone replacement works and is beneficial and not problematic the way people think that it is, if you know what you're doing. If, if, a, if a physician knows what they are doing and have been trained to do it, they can really help people live healthier lives as they age. But the medical establishment writ large has resisted that message. The FDA has resisted that message. And they've, they put out scare signs, you know, oh, at least a prostate cancer, at least a breast cancer. It, you have heart attacks and strokes. Which uh, is it, not true. I mean, none, none of which not, is substantiated not by the current research. Fear methods. Yes. Which is worrisome when it's your government. <laughs> or, or true believers. I mean, there are there are doctors who are ethical, legitimate, true believers in what they were trained 30, 40, 35, 50 years yeah, ago. We didn't they know haven't that. kept up with the new changes. They don't know. And some of the research is just in the last few years. Mm-hmm. So there is good news on the horizon. More and more doctors are beginning to Mm -hmm. say, well, maybe I won't resist it. Even if I don't embrace it, Mm -hmm. maybe I'm willing to say, perhaps she knows what, you know, what we're doing doesn't seem to be making a difference. So try what she's doing, see if it makes a difference. Mm -hmm. And so, so people do, but what we're excited about the thing we want to talk about today is the national Institute of health has just conducted a series of uh, tests on replacing testosterone in men, not, not women. And they didn't use the method that you use. They Uh use a gel instead of Uh a a bioidentical pellet. And we've done a lot of conversations about why the pellets are better, Uh uh, and why, what is problematic about gels, Uh uh, because you get the spikes and people go up and down. They're inconsistent about estrogen conversion and estrogen conversion, all, Uh all kinds of problems, uh, that can be uh, avoided, not even eliminated, Uh but avoided it by using the pellets, but they're not using that for the research. But the point I want to make is they did research on men age 65 and older who had low testosterone amounts that weren't caused by some, some uh, disease function. Uh, and they wanted to find out, does this help them with mood, with sexual functionality and with mobility mm-hmm. and what they want to, to do in the study was compare these men's testosterone levels to those of young, healthy men. Which is what we've been doing forever. Which is what forever. we have been doing And forever. everybody has been saying, oh, you can't do that because they're old. They should have no testosterone. You know, you can't find a disease if you compare it to other people who have disease. <laughs> I mean, so that's the same thing. We always compared it to young, healthy men right. and women to young, healthy women. Not to their age cohort, not to other 65-year-olds to say, well, at least I'm better than Bill and Tom. But to say, how do I compare to what I was when I was between 40? twenty and forty? Yes, and so I'll let you tell the good news. What did the NIH find? They found that actually, when they brought testosterone levels back to young, healthy levels in these men, right, they got better. All their symptoms got better. They and specifically, they got better in terms of libido and sexual functioning. Right. That was the most Biggest. noticed change. Right. And and. I assume that's self-reported because I don't know of a. No, it's self-reported, and but but n- no man's going to say it doesn't. It you know if they're given something that's supposed to make everything work. Yeah. 
they admit if it doesn't work because they want work. something yeah, they different. They want it to work. Like, right. Okay, and, I, do I need more yeah. of that or do I need that and something? Or That's something, something they're not going to tell a yeah. tale about unless it's outside the doctor's office. They yeah. might tell a tale about it outside the doctor's office but not in because then they can't get help. Right. So, so the report, and it just came out in February, mm -hmm. uh, New England Journal of Medicine on February the 18th. Mm -hmm. The report is that they, they conducted a series of seven experiments, and they have results on the first three. Mm -hmm. And the first three are the three that look at improvement in sexual function, replacement of libido, uh, improvement mood. of mood, uh, and, and the perception of having more energy, energy. and the, the improvement of mobility. And they say the data is not as profound or significant for mood and mobility, although there is data that shows mm -hmm. that, that at least men are self-reporting. They feel better mm -hmm. and they have more energy. Their quality of life is the, better. Yeah, they're, they're measuring for mobility. They're measuring their uh, distance walked in six minutes. Mm -hmm. uh, what if, if, if You get down in the weeds of the report and they say they walk faster, but they don't walk, walk farther. Uh, so, so there's still some but question. But that's how long the study is. Yeah. You have to build that up. Stamina is built up. But if you don't have testosterone, you can try walking over and over and over again. You're not going to build stamina because you can't build muscle. Right. But, or, or heart stamina. But if you have testosterone and you do it you over do time, both. your yeah. stamina gets better and better over time. So right. it's how long the test is, how long they've been watching. Mm -hmm. In our patients, stamina is better. Mm -hmm. And that's even faster because it's a more intense treatment. It builds up higher and faster. So patients notice the difference more quickly within, within four weeks. They notice the difference, but over four months, they get perceptively better. I mean, they lose fat, they gain muscle, they feel better, their sex lives are better, unless they've had damage to their blood vessels. Okay. Somehow they've collected... Um, They've pl collected plaque Black. or their blood vessels have, they've gone so long without testosterone, their blood vessels no longer dilate, which is what you need for an erection. So there is some qualification. If you've already damaged those blood vessels, we're not going to get all that back. So sometimes we still use Viagra with the testosterone. Right. But they get their sex but drive but back. Right. The drive is there. The drive's got to be Drive's there. about testosterone. That's the main reason that men who start to have ED problems, which are... Uh, an early warning signal for heart issues. Mm -hmm. You start to have ED problems uh, and you take an ED drug and you get your erection back and it's functional. But if you don't have the libido, you don't care. You quit yeah. using it. Mm -hmm. And so most of the men who go to their doctors and get an ED drug mm -hmm. end up not taking it for more than two or three well, months. It's really expensive too. It is expensive and it also doesn't do what they imagined that it would do because mm -hmm. the core issue there is the libido. If you get the libido levels back to what you were as a young man, then you're interested in having sex. You are alert to it. You're cueing. You're doing all the things to signal your availability. But then if you have a plaque issue or a blood flow issue, mm -hmm. then you need that complementary treatment of the ED drug, which then is win-win for everybody. Mm -hmm. It works well together. Yeah. Motivation is a big deal. They didn't really look at motivation here, but it's a huge deal because even if it's not just motivation to have sex, it's motivation to go do something. I mean, if you, if you remember, if you have yeah. parents that are over 65 or you're over 65, you know that sometimes it's just easier if you haven't had your testosterone replaced to just sit there and do so nothing. So many elderly people just retreat into their home. They don't go out. They don't go out in the community. They don't go out and be active and do things. They watch TV and they sit and wait to die. And, and that motivation to do things is testosterone induced. Yeah. And so if you've lost that, both men and women, it's just easy to sit there. But we live so long mm -hmm. taking blood pressure medicines and heart medicines and we take all this medication, but we don't care if we live anymore. Yeah. That's, that's a, a mental thing that is acted upon by testosterone, stimulating the proper neurotransmitters to get you up and going, even, even cleaning their house. I mean, how many people do you know that just things just stack up everywhere because they don't care anymore. They used to keep it nice and tidy and they were motivated to get things, you know, work, work on their inside of their house or outside of their house, their garden. And then all of a sudden it's a mess. That's no motivation. I remember my mother did that after her husband died and her children left. She retreated into her farm home 
And when I went to see her, there was like a path from the couch to the sink and a path from the, the couch to the bathroom that she traveled. Mm -hmm. And the rest of her house deteriorated. She didn't clean house anymore. She didn't go to the grocery store. People had to bring her food. And finally, they put her in a, an old age home. Uh, but she just quit living. She just vegetated on the couch and watched TV all day. And I don't think she's unrepresentative of a lot of older people. Mm -hmm. And what you have preached for years is that there's a, a, a malfunction in their system that could be improved with the replacement of testosterone and estrogen. Right. And they, they get their energy back. They get their alertness back. They get their bone structure back. They get strength back. Their muscles are, are the big part because without muscles, you just kind of like curl up. They have the ability to lose weight. They don't just sit and eat you know, like sugar all day. Mm -hmm. uh, it just There are so many positive benefits that can occur that you have preached about for years <laughs> that the system has said, mm, it's it, that, you can't prove that. That's Doctors not true. Doctors have literally we don't know just... That. Have other, doctors that I know who are intelligent but haven't done any research since they were in medical school mm -hmm. and are on my age have just lambasted me about this. And it's it's crazy. Now I'm going to send this article mm -hmm. to all of them. Yeah. I'm like, so finally, finally, I've got something. And I mean, I had a million other articles that are from Maybe all over the world. on our website too. Yeah. Well, but, they, but they tend but to they won't, believe research they don't, that's done in other... Even other, if it's done in Europe, they don't believe it. Right. If, unless it's done here. Yeah. So now we have something that's done here. But we have research that's done here as well uh, that proves that replacing testosterone doesn't lead to an increased risk for prostate cancer right. that proves that replacing testosterone doesn't lead to heart attacks right. or replacing testosterone doesn't lead to, pro, uh, to bre breast cancer, breast cancer. In fact, we treat breast cancer with it. Yeah. Uh, so there is a, an accumulation of data that is known among this group of doctors who are called anti aging clinicians mm -hmm. and there are two international organizations that are created for these physicians to to go to where, where they educate one another mm -hmm. and they reinforce the lessons and that we are go there. to them we do and and yet there still is a pushback uh, or a resistance from the pharmacological industry and the food and drug administration saying whoa whoa can't do this. We need to not do this because, and then even this NIH study that validates what you've been preaching mm -hmm. all along gives warnings. And they say, we, we don't, we don't have enough information. Side effects. We haven't accumulated enough data. The data that we've accumulated is really exciting and really positive, but we also didn't do it long enough to find out if there are adverse side effects. So we need to test for adverse side effects. Well, you've been doing it for 15 years and the side effects that you talk about all the time are ones that depending on the individual person, mm -hmm. you know, like growing facial hair for women, for women yeah. is a side effect. It's a side effect. But of is it, testosterone. is it a trade off you're willing to make for the other benefits? And can that side effect be treated independently? And with we, some other we do thing? prevent it independently exactly. because we anticipate that in most women. Right. And you tell them about it. Mm -hmm. You tell them it, this may happen. If it does happen, we can do this, this, mm -hmm. and this. So don't panic about that. And generally that works for your patients. Mm -hmm. But And we also take care of any other. There are certain people who take their testosterone and convert it because genetically they convert it into more estrone, that old lady, old man estrogen. Uh -huh. So we follow that. We do blood work to make sure you're not that guy or you're not that girl. And if you are, we know how to take care of that and prevent it. Right. So. So it's not just throwing a drug at it. It's more like managing it properly. So if you manage it properly, then we have very few problems, very few side effects. I mean, we have a really good success rate. The, I'd say the biggest, the biggest problem is somebody who comes to me after 10 years of, of ED. Mm -hmm. And they've had, so they've had low testosterone right. for 10 years they they're, they've and had and plaque build up. ED from poor blood flow and from first low testosterone, then plaque, then I can't really get the blood flow to their pelvis without Viagra. And sometimes that doesn't even work. Right. Or the second biggest issue is diabetes. People uh, have had diabetes yeah. and don't manage their blood sugars. I'm, I'm a, not about keeping blood sugars in 
<laughs> yeah. Yes, you are. Yes, I am. Keeping blood sugars in the normal range because outside the normal range, it damage, damages your blood vessels and that damages your erections. I mean, yeah. that's it. I mean, if, if your diabetic doctor said that to you, I bet you would stop eating certain things and take the medicine that you're supposed to be taking because that's very important to men, obviously. So, uh, yeah, if you ever want to have or enjoy sex yeah. again, you may want to consider keeping your blood sugar in order and, and, and yeah. treating your, or preventing plaque by exercising and eating properly and, or, and taking Lipitor if you have to, you know, those things keep your blood vessels. So clear. again, you are preaching the message that you always preach. The replacement of the hormones is the key that unlocks the ability then to have good quality aging, healthy aging, right. but it also requires maybe some additional medications like mm -hmm. Lipitor. Uh, it, it requires watching your blood sugars. Mm -hmm. It requires a diet and exercise regimen. Mm -hmm. You need to exercise and especially you need as you get older to do uh, resistance in addition to cardio. And, and weight, weight mm -hmm. exercises so that you can keep your muscles bulky. Right. And, and one of the things in this study talks about it, uh, the, the thing they focus on most is libido and the res restoration of libido by restoring testosterone levels to young, healthy normals, which mm -hmm. is a, a, cre a, critical, a critical term. Point. Uh, but they also then look at improvement in mobility uh, and energy. And they say, well, we don't have enough data yet to really know. They're saying that they are feeling better, that they are describing that they have more energy. But what we measured was just the distance of walking. We didn't see them walk any further, but they walked faster. Uh, but what you know, what you have experience with for years is people who, who can stand up and walk and not take a walker, who when mm -hmm. they came to you were on a walker, mm -hmm. who don't need a cane or a crutch. Not because, and I'm not talking about knee or hip issues, right. we're talking but about just balance overall... issues, muscle structure, yeah, and the weakness. energy to do it. Mm -hmm. uh, those things improve, and they're critical improvements. But, so, but I want to start, I mean, it doesn't. you don't have to be old to start this. I want to start earlier, like when men yes. start at 55, the, that's the average age for men having low testosterone and actually it's even been lower lately. I've been getting a lot of 50 year olds with low testosterone, but, but you have to start then because the tennis players and the runners, they all stop doing it. They just stop. It hurts because they don't get enough blood flow to their muscles. They aren't as fast. They fall down and hurt something because their balance is a little off because their testosterone's off. That's the beginning of the end. Yeah. And then they stop doing everything. So we can, we can intervene at any level. We do best when we intervene early, obviously, in, in the loss of testosterone. But we can still intervene at 80, yeah. and we have. Yeah, and have positive outcomes. And have had excellent outcomes. People who would never walk again are walking right. without assistance. So, so the two exciting points here. One is just simply the validation of the message to the messenger. <laughs> the other is the recognition that the National Institute of Health has conducted these studies at the request of the National Academy of Medicine, partly because the message is really beginning to spread in the medical community mm -hmm. that we need to take a look at this. There are so much demand now for people to get testosterone in place, and, mm -hmm. and we're trying to push the demand to have that also offered for women and not just for men. Right. Uh, and, and we're not the only country where this news is spreading. Mm -hmm. So doctors and, and medical training systems are beginning to recognize we need some data to make make the case and right. and they're finding it so uh hopefully you'll experience the good news of that and it'll be something useful for you mm -hmm. and spread the news thank yeah. you thank you for listening email your questions or comments to podcast at biobalancehealth.com you can find the biobalance healthcast on itunes and on youtube for more information about bioidentical hormone pellet therapy and other reverse aging solutions, visit biobalancehealth.com or call 314-993-0963. You can find Dr. Maupin on Twitter at Dr. Kathy Maupin and on Facebook at facebook.com slash biobalancehealth. Find Brett Newcomb at brettnewcomb.com.